The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left for the villages round Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, they said, others Elijah, others again one of the prophets. But you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter spoke up and said to him, you are the Christ. And he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man was destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death and after three days to rise again. And he said all this quite openly. Then taking him aside, Peter began to remonstrate with him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. He called the people and the disciples to him and said, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, Anyone, anyone who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was an incredible moment on Thursday evening when Pope Francis entered the National Stadium. You may have been there, you may have watched it online, but it was incredible. There were loud cheers and the choir led the people in an enthusiastic rendition of Vivat Pastor Bonus. And some of our members of St. Alphonse's choir were in the Papal Mass choir as well. Vivat Pastor Bonus, long live the Good Shepherd. And Catholics of Singapore were going to let the whole of the country know that we are the Catholic Church and this is our Pope. And when Pope Francis went to CJC to meet with the young people, they came up with a cheer themselves, like a, like a football match, you know. They went, Papa Francesco. And it was a very lively atmosphere. Now, Catholics are very happy to see the Pope. And, and that's great. But is it just a big carnival, a big celebration? Now that Pope Francis has left and gone home, what happens now? Do we go back to the way things were? Jesus asked the disciples in the gospel today, who do you say I am? And then Peter replies very enthusiastically, you are the Christ. And then St. Alphonsus choir led all the other disciples in singing Vivat Pastor Bonus. Now did Peter really understand the answer that he was giving? Did he know what he was saying? The story from Mark's Gospel today seems to suggest that he did not. Peter makes a confession of faith, but he does not what, know or understand what his confession requires. He's horrified when Jesus says that the Son of Man is to suffer grievously and be put to death. And then Peter argues with Jesus, No, Master, this cannot be. And then Jesus rebukes Peter in, in quite a harsh way in front of all of his friends. But the truth is that all of us can also have that same misunderstanding that Peter had. We might imagine that to have faith just means to belong to the church, 
certainly felt a strong sense of belonging last Thursday. But James in his letter tells us that we cannot say we have faith if we don't live that faith through good works. We might imagine that confessing the faith entitles us to a happy and merry life, never having to face setbacks or failure, never having to suffer. But Jesus tells us that just as he had to suffer, if we are to follow him, we also have to carry our cross. The third suffering servant song from the prophet Isaiah, we are asked not to resist when people insult us, but to trust in God to vindicate us if people accuse us wrongly. We might imagine that belonging to the church is about participating in grand events and festivals and liturgies, just like the papal mass that we experienced, organized perfectly in the Singaporean way, huge and triumphal celebration of our belonging. All of the scripture readings that we read today caution us against this kind of misunderstanding. We may find it very hard to accept the warning of Jesus. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. We might be shocked by the words of the prophet Isaiah. I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. And we are challenged by the exhortation of James. Someone who has never done a single good act but claims to have faith, will that faith save him? If faith is like that, if good works do not go with it, it is dead. Those are strong words that we read from the scripture today. Pope Francis' words when he was here were more kind and encouraging, but they were also challenging. He used the analogy of Singapore's architectural development, like as if it's the skyline rising from the sea, that's the image that he used. It's a testimony of the nation's dynamism, economic development and resilience. But this development, he reminds us, must be founded on, on love for the common good of all and not just a few. While meritocracy is a national value, it also comes with risks because people can be left behind, the vulnerable, the poor, the elderly, the differently abled, migrant workers, the greatest asset of our country, he reminds us, is not our wealth, but our people. So we must be inclusive and uphold the dignity of each person, not because of what they contribute to the economy, but because they are children of God. It's a lovely feeling to be in the presence of the Holy Father. We feel inspired to live out this vision that he has shared for our country and for our church. But now, as St. James says, we have to put those words into action. We actually have to go out and do it. That's not easy. But maybe that's the very simple way that we are asked to take up our cross and follow Jesus respecting the dignity of each one, especially those who are vulnerable, who are different from ourselves, caring for our brothers and sisters who do not have or may not have the bare necessities of life. It's not just food and clothing, but dignity, a just wage, acceptance, welcome, most of all, our love and friendship. That is the good work that will prove our faith.
And that is what it means to confess that Jesus is the Christ. Oh, Mary, how I call. 